I don't want to like dig into the scientific effects of weather changes, extreme situations, but it's, uh, it's also something which uh, will fundamentally change the way we live. It's just like a global systemic issue, right? So if we don't tackle it together, it will first obviously harm those who are already like having difficult living situation, and then it gets everybody else. My name is Ivo Mila. My name is Emma Patmore. My name is Hannah Kuminga. My name is Jan Fuhrer. My name is Simon. I'm from Göttingen, a small university town in the middle of Germany. Originally Dutch, uh, I'm one of the co-founders of the Green Tech Alliance. Alliance and I'm responsible for communications. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Plan A and the initiator and co-founder co of, of the Green Tech, Tech Alliance. Alliance. But what I've actually been working on over the last three to four years are different um, new solutions in the sustainable fashion space. Aside from that, I am the senior marketing strategist at Ecoligal. My other day today is uh, Plan A. At Plan A, I'm the chief commercial officer. I'm in charge of the commercial uh, side of the business. And that's basically my roles. And um, it's sometimes it's strategic stuff, sometimes operational stuff, or yeah. The Green Tech Alliance is a global community of sustainable businesses, um, mostly startups, who have impact at their core. We have close to uh, 500, more than 500 members now, and uh, they come from all over the world. Uh, we definitely have a lot of European and US companies, uh, but slowly we've been growing the Asian and African uh, representation as, as well. well as advisors and investors who want to support them. I think for us as an alliance it's really important to be clear about who we're talking to and what our mission is and I think it's, it's quite clearly about supporting green tech founders and helping them on their path so we don't see ourselves as a vehicle to educate the public for example. We try to enable everyone within this community by uh, educating all, all stakeholders to learn how to most efficiently scale Impact. We're about building really efficient um, and sort of yeah, focused networks of people who are working on implementing the change. We do need to have systems change and this is coming from businesses because they're changing the way that people consume, they're changing the way that people travel, they're changing the way that people think and they're making it easier for people to do that and that's what's really important. Whereas at, on a governmental side they only can create a framework that solutions can thrive. Uh, they don't bring the solutions themselves. We've built a global society that doesn't evolve around a sustainable way of living on the planet and it's very hard to get out of a system that is so established and has so many people interacting with each other not even knowing of each other. There's a beautiful evidence that shows what kind of action is actually needed. Uh, it is the statistics from how much CO2 was reduced last year. Even though the whole planet stopped and everything kind of felt to us like it was, uh, it was impossible to do the normal things that you would do, the reduction in CO2 emissions was only 7% uh, for the whole year. I do think that we're going to reap the benefits in the long term. Um, but at the same time, we're already on our journey back to normal. Um, our CO2 emissions in the world are back, to, back on the level uh, prior to COVID already, while we're still in lockdowns. Um, that's not promising. That indicates that a more fundamental shift is needed in the way we operate. Communal uh, mutual group action is really what matters when it comes to climate change, but that should not be mistaken for action only dependent on individuals. We need action that comes from governments, uh, from companies. It's better to think politically about climate change and not take the blame on yourself of what's happening, but instead be politically active. The change that is necessary is one that is systemic, is one that it requires a lot of the biggest polluters to start taking a stance. The majority of climate change is coming from industry. These are uh, the industries that you don't even hear about, and we're talking about mining, we're talking about the coal industries. It's not from you um, not having bought uh, a reusable cup. They're not the ones that are making the carbon neutrality claims. Uh, they're not um, 
at the forefront of this movement because for them the changes that are necessary are a lot more significant and it could potentially wipe off their whole industry. All the conversation we have around consumers having to better themselves is actually a huge distraction from them becoming politically active. When people actually know what's going on and they also feel like they can change that, then they really do so. We see a lot of movement on regulations. Uh, there's of course a new Green Deal coming in Europe. The EU move has been fantastic with the Green Deal. That has given a lot of us hope. Uh, in the UK um, also there's a lot of promising changes that have happened on a legislative level as well. I feel like we're, we're going to find solutions. It's more about how quickly we will find them and how much damage we're going to do to our natural environment in, in the meantime. The awareness around sustainability is a point where it just can't be stopped. People have so much more awareness now than they did one year ago and way more awareness than if you think about two or three years ago. It's really a rolling movement. At the same time, it has triggered a certain understanding on what kind of impact global catastrophes can have on the world. Normally when people start understanding how climate change is impacting their own business, their own life, um, they start kind of being more receptive to the message. COVID has been a fantastic opportunity actually for this waking, waking up to happen. COVID just uh, came and didn't even knock on our door and just said, hey, here I am. Uh, all of a sudden supply chains were disturbed to a level that was totally unexpected. Um, and access to products, access to services became unavailable. So there was a kind of a preview of what is ahead of us if we don't take our steps ahead. So a lot of people still think that it's a trade-off. You can either have impact or you can create profit. Whereas when you look at all of the members that are in the community, they basically all have a profit-driven model where they're going to then use that uh, revenue to create more impact. We spend a lot of time educating um, not only investors but any kind of business decision makers to give them an overview of why this really matters to them and why they need to be putting time and effort and resources into it now. So especially in the areas that are not hit, hit so much, I think there will be a lot of resistance. I think uh, it's not too late, but same with uh, other developments in the world, we will need to adjust and learn how to mitigate and live with climate change and also some parts of the climate crisis. Um, but it's up to us if it's going to be like a tough choice and really painful or if we still find a way to get around, you know, like live with nature, stop exploiting it too much and, and be more resilient in that way, also like mentally, but also in a way our economies and our societies are shaped.